And that's um, ageism at work. So I want to talk about that. And I've got some hot sports opinions about it, but I want y'all to, to remember the, 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 the background and history in this comes a lot from me being a headhunter. So y'all know my first books were business books and job books and career things. I've done, I worked for the wall street journal and was a, a, a director for them for a long time in their recruiting areas. And um, I was a headhunter. I was a, a equity partner and managing partner at one of the largest search firms in America. And I spent uh, well over a decade in that industry and uh, placed uh, senior executives, mostly C, you know CFOs, revenue cycles, CEOs, administration at hospitals. And what's interesting, and I've also done a lot of consulting for some of the biggest names, Fortune 500 companies in America as well. So here's the deal. Yeah, there's so much bitching and moaning about younger employees, about millennials, about Gen Y, Gen Z, all of that about how they show up and lack of work ethic and all of that. And I, I, okay, I understand that. I also hear a lot uh, from people our age or in Gen X or beyond, or people who are in midlife who are experiencing firsthand ageism, trying to get work and what it means. Is ageism wrong? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely is wrong. Should something be done about it? Absolutely. Is anything going to be done about it? No, not a damn thing. We can sit there and we can talk about it. You know, we can virtue signal all we want. We can, you know, sit there and understand why it shouldn't happen, but it does. It's occurred forever. It will continue to occur forever. And here's my hot sports opinion on this that may not, you know, may not be very popular, but it's right. Um, you know, my first bit book was I wrote the first business book for Gen X. Okay, Job Smarts for twenty something. So when we were we were coming of age, right? We came at, you know, at least for me anyway, and a lot of people, you know, we graduated into a to a recession, into a shitty economy. And we looked at people and they, they, this whole idea of what we were told, if you go to school, you get a good degree, you get a good job, and then you'll climb the ranks. Yeah, we found that a lot of the people ahead of us weren't going anywhere. And a lot of those opportunities and things were, you know, the, the boomers were gumming up the works. You know? And we didn't have all of these opportunities to to advance like we had had been told you know when we were in our 20s and early 30s we're sitting there looking at this and going wait a minute that's bullshit we were told if we go do what we were told we get these degrees and we enter the workforce and we we play the game that will will rise through the ranks and it wasn't and so what did we do we looked at the people ahead of us and we bitch and moan hey you know you had your turn get out of here right what's happening ah now we're those people now we are those people in our 40s, 50s and beyond. And we're like, oh, well, we shouldn't be told that we're too old. What, I mean, for, for it's, here's the, the irony. For Gen X being told that you're, that you're tough as nails, you don't put up with any shit. We're sure sounding like a lot of babies, aren't we? Okay. And here's the point. Nothing's going to change. I know that yeah, I'm Johnny Optimist, but this, is, this has been going on for millennia. Okay. Yes. You, you know, there, you should be holding um, your elders with, you know, revere your elders and, you know, hold them in esteem and pull from their wisdom. Absolutely. Okay. But this has been going on forever from a tribal systems to corporations, to everything. The young buck sits there and thinks, Hey, you're old, you're slow, you're weak. Get out of here. Okay. It's my turn. We, and we forget that we thought that we forget that we thought the same damn thing when we were in our twenties. And now that we're there, it's like, oh, well, this shouldn't happen because oh, you know, nobody likes getting, nobody likes being the slow goat. That said, I want to share with you some things I learned um, as a recruiter, as a headhunter, an executive recruiter, and that go on the dirty truth, the dirty bits. It's kind of like Anthony Bourdain uh, when he talked about Kitchen Confidential of like, here's the stuff that goes on in the kitchen about your 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 restaurant experience and food service industry that you really don't want to know. But here's the here's the story. I mean, I like the answer, but it's the answer. Yes, ageism exists and it exists in such an overt fashion that it would make your head spin. OK, it would the things that I had employers tell me to look for, to do, to not do who you wanted. Whether you speak in code or not, I had people come flat out, don't want some the the I want someone high energy. What do you think that means? I had people flat out say, I don't want a woman. I had people flat out tell me, I don't want someone over 45. I don't want someone with kids. I don't want I mean the shit that you're not supposed to say, guess what? They say. <laughs> they say. And they may not tell their HR people that, but they'll tell recruiters that. It's funny because then you see, then especially if they go in house or tell recruit, tell their own recruiters. Then you see when it becomes very couched and then you have things like, well, I just think they're a little too overqualified. Ah, overqualified. 
What does that mean? What do y'all think that means? Over or they? Just, I don't think they'd be happy here because of a number of reasons. Some fairly legitimate, maybe, and some just such couched code words and euphemisms for what the elephant in the room is. You're overqualified. I had this argument so many times. I'd give them candidates, and one is far and away the the best candidate. Okay, and they are they may be legitimately overqualified because they held a higher position or had greater experience, or with a better organization, bigger organization, whatever it is. And I would present this to someone, they go, well, I think you're just a little overqualified for this. Look, if they're willing to do the job, you need to look at them. Because they, here they are, that oftentimes the hiring manager or HR person or whomever would make a judgment about that. Well, they really wouldn't want to do that. They wouldn't want to do that job. They're applying because they either need a job, okay? They did it. They know what they're coming in for. Do you think people actually, you know, if they were, you were a director somewhere, you're applying at a manager level, for example, okay? Someone go, well, they're, they're overqualified for that. Is code for you're going to be too expensive, too old, pain in the ass, no more than I know. That's a huge one right there. You're going to find an insecure manager right there with, or they're going to be a pain in the ass because they have so much experience. They've already done it this way. And I want someone young, dumb, and stupid who will do what I tell them to do. That's that. Sorry. That's the dirty secret right there because I've had these conversations. I've had these conversations in the rooms that no one's ever supposed to know about. But when you go, give me the debrief. Okay. That's really what happens. Go, God, you know, they're not going to be happy. They're going to bolt. Because you know what? We're going to pay them this. They say that they want this much money, but you know what? Come on. They're used to making X. You know, we're going to pay them this and they're going to be out in five months when the bigger, better deal comes along. Are they? Maybe. But my argument was always this. And if you're, if you're older, well, hell, I mean, everybody I deal with is older. Okay. Midlife. So here's the deal. My argument to them was always, everybody's going to leave you. Everybody's going to leave you. You realize that, right? That whether you hire someone younger or older, they're all going to bolt. Because if, let's say you hire that young person that's cheaper, okay, that, that is malleable. At some point, they're going to get bored. They're going to get bored because maybe you're not progressing them for, you know, as fast or as far as they want. Maybe they just decide, hey, screw this. I want to go sell tacos on a beach, okay, and they're out. Or maybe they get married or, you know, want to leave or say, I'm sick of living here and want to do something else. Because they're going to leave you because nobody stays at a job long anymore. I remember when, when I was recruiting and, well, you know, look at this. They've job hopped. They've, they were only in their job five years last time. And I want somebody who's going to stay forever. Nobody stays forever. People don't stay. Hell, people don't stay in marriages forever. People don't stay in jobs forever. They will leave you. They're going to leave you and they're going to leave you faster than they ever have before. And I don't give a damn how old they are. So my question then becomes, knowing that someone's going to leave you, okay, why are you looking for longevity? Because it is a contract. It is an unspoken social contract of, hey, I'm going to stay as long as I want to and as long as this works for me and as long as I'm paid well and fairly and respected and I enjoy the job and it's challenging work. But the moment that stops or the moment something in my own personal life changes, I'm out of there. That's it. And yet we, we look at someone who thinks that as, oh, my God, you're horrible. They shouldn't do that. We want someone who's going to give us everything. Nobody gives you everything anymore. Nobody gives you anything. You're lucky if they show up and give you anything. Okay? So why are you bitching and moaning about that? Because here's the deal. You and I both know that whether they're young or old, but let's take that, that employee that you expect loyalty and blood out of. The moment the market changes, the moment you don't hit your numbers, the moment – you know, you lose a client. The moment shit turns, the moment you become anything, become acquired, the moment they do something to miss a project and you just don't like the way they handle things anymore, guess what? You're gone. You can get rid of them for anything. Loyalty? Loyalty is a temporary and transient thing. And nobody likes to admit that. Now, now, now we've established this about, about how temporary and transient things are. Let's talk about the benefits of why you want to hire somebody older. Because I would make this argument there. I said, everybody's going to leave. So don't sit there and think because they're young and you can pay them less and you can teach them everything that they're going to sit there and go, oh, my God, please, I want to stay forever. So if you – let's say that everybody's going to stay – the same people are going to stay 18 months, give or take. If the person who's older or more experienced or overqualified is willing to accept to come to work for you for the, the pay that you're putting out there, wouldn't it be better to have someone for 18 months – that can do twice the amount of work, that can help you accelerate faster, that can do better things, that ha doesn't have a learning curve, knowing full well that in 18 months, everybody's going to leave. Either the junior person can't hack it, says I'm out, or the older person who's more experienced, you want to get rid of them, whatever. You've gotten twice the amount of work out of it. 
you've gotten twice the level of work and competence out of it. And so I think that's the whole thing. And so the point is, you know, and granted, maybe I'm just an a-hole. I would counsel job seekers to call out the elephant in the room. You know, you wouldn't be happy. Why would I wouldn't be happy? Why will I not be happy? Tell me why. Well, if it's a cultural thing, code for, you know, screaming ages. But if it's the, you're overqualified. I know a lot of y'all aren't fans of sports analogies, but let's use a sports analogy here. If I'm running a sports team, if I, if I, the Cowboys or pick your team, pick your sport. But if I know, hey, I want a Super Bowl run here, and we're kind of average. Why do you think they bring in superstars for a year or two year contract? Knowing full well that this person's near retirement, they're older, they won't stay forever. They're not going to be someone you build a team on. But you know what? That year that you're there, it's going to be pretty damn amazing because you can go further, faster with that experienced person. Businesses don't really look at that, do they? They don't look at that. It's like, hey, you know what? We need something that's going to help us accelerate, help us move faster, help us be better for this period of time. And you know what? They may not be here forever, but damn, it's going to be a hell of a ride and help us completely leapfrog um, everybody else and be places where we couldn't have been otherwise. Oh, they're overqualified. Suck it up. Suck it up and benefit from that. Because if someone comes to you, whether they're in their late 40s or 50s or whatever, you know, gray hair, no hair, doesn't matter. And they are willing to accept, have they made more before? And I ran into that all the time. Well, so-and-so was used to making, you know, they were used to making 180 or 200. And there's no way they're going to accept 150 on this. You know, maybe not. And maybe not. Or they're always going to be wanting something more. They're going to come in at the top end. Maybe. But also, I think a lot of people who are willing to look at that, they know the score. And I think, you know, it used to, it wasn't this way. But I think a lot of times people really, you know, at this age realize too, hey, maybe I've made as much as I'm, maybe, maybe I've topped out. Maybe I've peaked. Maybe I'm not going to go. And I've seen this a lot with senior executives. You know what? Maybe I was making X and you know what? I won't make that again. But I want to work. I want to be happy. Maybe I was making that. And you know what? The company sucked. It was stressful. I hated it. You know, I, all this. And I want something that that I can do, that I can contribute. I can be a player at and I can be effective. Yeah, I may be overqualified, but you know what? I didn't like having the, the, the pressure cooker that this was. And I'll take a little less money for a better quality of life and somewhere where I can make a difference. Right? People don't think about that because we're looking at things in a binary way. Employers, the employers and HR people, they look at things as just black and white. Yes, no. And that was my job as a headhunter oftentimes was to go, here's what you're not seeing. Now, stupid employers, sorry, they're out there. They look at things very black and white. Well, I need this. This is it. And really, that's it. It's a, you know, all hiring is kind of like dating. It's a giant funnel. You look at the at the, the top end of the funnel, it's an immediate yes or no. Qualified, unqualified. You know, you've done it or you're not. Then it becomes narrow. Realizing there's so much value in people our age. And that's not the virtue signaling. Oh, you should give them a chance. It's like this. You know what? If I'm going to go buy a car, okay? Sorry, Chevy. I'm going to throw y'all under the bus here for a minute. But if I go get a Chevy or a Mercedes that maybe, you know, a couple of years old, maybe it was a demo and it's like low miles and I can get it for next to nothing or for the same price that a Chevy would, what do you think I'm buying? I'm taking the bins twice on Sunday. It's value. I see people our age, job seekers. Well, you know, they just, they said I'm overqualified. I don't understand. Understand it. They think you're too expensive. You're going to be a pain in the ass. You're going to know more than the younger manager. You're going to overshadow them. You're going to bring your experience, which they really don't want, you know, because they're intimidated. Right? The idea is if you are open to learning, to bringing your talents where you're, I'll give you an example. Okay. You know, a, a personal example on this one. So, um, I didn't become a recruiter or headhunter until later in my career. Okay? I'd had a, you know, worked for a number of years. I've been in sales. I'd already written books. I'd spoken. I I'd already worked, um, you know, for for big companies. And when I went into search, though, I was at least smart enough to know. I mean, there were people, a lot of young people in there who were doing this. I'd never searched before. Okay, but I'd recruited. I'd done all these other things. But I remember going in there and thinking, hey. You guys obviously been successful doing this, okay? I have a lot of life experience, a lot of business experience. I know a lot of things, but you know what? I'm smart enough to know what I don't know, and I don't know how you do it. So my approach to this, and I remember telling the guy who who um, you know was the, the name partner on this, I said, "Look, I'm really good, but I'm and, and I'm cocky, but I know enough to know." I don't know this business. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to talk about what I've done, how I used to do it. Why don't we do it this way? I'm going to come in. I'm going to be a blank slate. I'm going to be a sponge until I put some skins on the wall. I'm going to do it your way. I'm going to wash, rinse, repeat. I'm going to Mr. Miyagi this shit. Okay. You tell me to, you know, wax on, wax off. I will do it until I get some skins on the wall and learn it your way. And then 
it's gloves off. And I'm going to then bring in what I know and my experience and all of these things. And it worked because I came in as a blank slate. I learned everything their way, which was valuable. I wasn't, oh, here's this old guy who comes in and thinks he knows everything. But then once I've learned that, then I can layer it with what I did know. And I accelerated at an alarmingly fast rate. And if you're older, that's a great way to do it. But there's the intimidation factor. There's the expense factor. There's the they're going to leave factor. There's the I won't be happy factor. And we think, because so many of us, and I saw this so many times, again, I've written job books. I recruited, I did all this. And so many people think that is you have to play the game a certain way. You're dealing with another person, another human being. And yet people don't want to say what's the blinding flash of the obvious. Hey, why do you think I wouldn't be happy? Why do you think I'm overqualified? And then you draw these analogies right there. Now, granted, sorry, HR, if you're dealing with an HR person or a recruiter or whatever like that, they can't do shit. Sorry, y'all are helpless, okay? Um, in terms of being able to then communicate, you're playing a game of telephone then because you can't communicate to the hiring manager, right? But if you ever get uh, an opportunity, you get face-to-face -face with someone who actually pulls the strings and gives it a thumbs up, thumbs down, and a hiring manager, a person you report to, or company owner or executive or like that, that's it. And I think a, a great way is saying, what, do you, what about me scares you? What about me scares you? What, what, what about this would make you not want to move forward? And then say, is it, is it the money? Is it the age? Is it? No one thinks about that because, oh, well, that's just bad form. You don't talk about that. I know, I, I know we got some Canadians on here who are very friendly. Look, my philosophy in, a lot of, in life and a lot of things is, look, if you, th if you think it's going down in flames, if you think it is swirling the drain here, you have 0.0, .0 things to lose. So just ask the question. And it's not this. It's not the statement of, well, you know, I'm a quick learner. Don't say that. Well, I pick up things quickly. I'm willing to learn. No one gives a shit. It's not always about your education. It's not always about reskilling and going up. It's about getting real. Because here's the other thing. This, this is the other elephant in the room that nobody wants to talk about here. If you're an employer and someone actually wants to work and shows up and is on time and, you know, can conjugate a verb and is remotely qualified, there you go. You're 70% of the way because there's so many people out. Seriously, there's so many people out there, young and old. Look, I got three 20-something kids who, thank God, are diligent and great jobs and kicking ass in their career. But you know what? I know so many other young people ghosting, the not showing up, the lack of professionalism, the lack of forethought, the lack of respect, the lack of diligence, okay? So if you get anybody, young, old, doesn't matter, and they show up and they're going to do the job, you know what? You get, you get bonus points. And especially then for if you're, if you're older, I, I'd call out that elephant in the room. I really would. You, here's the deal. We expect people to connect the dots. We expect people to see things. Oftentimes they don't, especially in hiring, okay? Because, you know, and I can tell you after dealing with, you know, hundreds and hundreds of, of, of hiring managers, okay? And executives and business owners. We think of things as just black and white, binary, yes or no. You got it or you don't. And it's not, it's not always that way. There's so many variables to this. Has turnover been a problem? Has absenteeism been a problem? has actually following through been the problem, has actually problem solving, critical thinking. We take those things for granted because they just don't fucking exist at a certain level now with employees. That's it. You know, young and old, but I mean, employees, period. Okay. And the fact that you can call that out, it's not willingness to learn. Okay. I could train this dog here to learn something, but it's the fact of, look, you're running a business. You have customers, you have clients, okay? Professionalism, okay? work ethic, all of these things. You can't expect someone to connect the dots. Sometimes you have to put it in their face, okay? And you have to ask the hard question. Are people going to lie? Yep, sure are. People going to squirm around it? Yep, sure are. But at least you will know that you took a swing. You got the bat and you took a swing at it rather than just letting, you know, some idiot, well, you know, because look, I've done it. Okay. I look, I prided myself on on giving people the real real. Okay. It was the good news or bad news. You're gonna get a lot of, well, it's just not a good fit. We chose to go in a different direction direction. Okay. Look, this is the other thing too. If you're older, if you can get somebody who will give you some honest feedback, honest feedback, then that's a good thing. That's a that's a great thing. Even if it stinks, even if it punches you and makes your nose bloody, that's a great thing. But you need to ask for it. You know, accepting euphemisms and bullshit like that? No, 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 no. It's my small rant for today. But overqualified? Damn.
who wouldn't want a superstar at a discount price? You know, you're a fool if you don't take that. And I'd tell them that to their face.